Hi, this is a tutorial for using the DAW Reaper. This is for uh, beginners who don't necessarily want to mix, but just basically want to be able to uh, collaborate with other people, perhaps record some dynamic lead vocals and send them to somebody who will then mix them. So, uh, if you want deeper dives, go to Kenny Joya. He's got amazing, uh, amazing tutorials and I'll put a little link somewhere on the screen at some point. Anyway, here we go. So to start, you've downloaded Reaper, obviously. You've got Reaper up. Here's a few things that you should be able to set up just the first time and then forget about them. So let's go uh, to Reaper file uh, preferences. Notice that the command in Mac is a uh, command comma. So you go to preferences, your device. Here's where you select your device, your uh, interface. You can also set your size here. I've got my sample rate at 48K and uh, that's fine. Usually once you set it, that's good to go. Um, the next thing you wanna deal with is where is your stuff gonna be saved? So when you save a new project, you go here to new project. I'm not going to do it because it's going to stop my recording. Uh, but if you, it'll bring up uh, a few things. So in your preferences, go to uh, general paths. See, it says default path to save new project. So. I recommend you make a folder on your hard drive, wherever you keep your stuff, call it Reaper projects or Reaper or music, whatever you want. And then you stick it in here. So you hit browse and you find that in your directory and you set that. So that'll be your default. So I have a default. I have an extra drive, storage, music, Reaper project. So it always goes there. I know where it is. So that's fine. The next thing that you're gonna do is, um, under preferences, there's project and prompt. Where's project? Here's project. So if you click this here, prompt to save on new project and open properties on new project, that might help your workflow. So every time you save a new thing, it's going to give you this option here. So if I go to project settings, you've got your sample rate, which we already talked about, the project BPM, Default is 120, the time signature. So you can set your uh, your BPM here when you open it. But set uh, save as default settings. It's all good to go. Okay. So that's the first thing you need to do. Uh, when you save this, there's a subdirectory that pops up. I recommend you check create subdirectory move all media and copy rather than move. Let me see if I can put this up without causing everything to collapse. Uh, we'll do save project as, so see down here. So I want you to click on like this, this one, this one, and that one. Create subdirectory for project, move all media into project directory and copy rather than move source material uh, media. Do that, it will make one of these boxes and it will save all your stuff, otherwise it's gonna be a mess. All right, so listen to me, do that. Again, this the Reaper is super deep, so you can go as deep as you want. I'm just giving you fast, you just wanna record and move on with your life. Okay, so. <laughs> The last thing is if my uh, screen does not look like your screen, it's because Reaper can have other uh, appearances. So if you go to options down here at themes, you can go online and you can download different themes, but like I downloaded one called Pro Tools. So if I click on that, you'll see my screen now looks totally different than it did before. Um, there's default, there's default 4.0, there's classic. I use default 4.0 apparently. So if your screen doesn't look like mine or if like this volume slider is a knob like this, um, you can play around with that to see if it looks more familiar 
Otherwise, you can customize it however you want. So that is the basic setup. Okay, section two, so basic menu items and key commands. So up here you see your menu. This is the kind of default menu up here. Um, the ones you need to know about. So this metronome here is the click. You can turn it on, turn it off. This magnet here is the snap to grid. And this is the grid line. So you see these grid lines here showing uh, every beat, quarter notes. If you take that away, you can't see them. Put it back. And uh, this is where you'll use this when you're editing, when you're sliding things around. Right now it doesn't really matter, but that's what those things do. Um, down here you'll see the beats per measure, the tempo, the time signature, which you can change. Um, here you have your transport controls, so stop, play, pause, forward, reverse, record, and loop. I recommend using key commands for these so you don't ever have to touch these, but if you need to touch them, that's where they live. So let's talk about basic key commands. So the first one, instead of pressing play and pause, space bar. Space bar. Space bar. Right? So space bar makes it play, space bar makes it stop. And this is set so that it just goes back to the same place. There are other options, but that seems to be default. That's the way I like it. So wherever I click up here, that's where it's going to start every time. Again, there are other options, but I'm not going to tell you what they are right now. Uh, preferences we talked about, that's command, uh, comma. These are all Mac, by the way. Record. <coughs> The default is command R, um, but some of us get fancy and we change the key commands, which I'm going to talk about briefly in a minute. But so for now, we'll say it's command R. Uh, back to the beginning is W. So if I was over here and I just hit W, it brings me back to the beginning. Um, zooming in, in or out. You can use the equal sign and the minus sign on your keyboard. So basically it's a plus and a minus. So the equal sign zooms in, the minus sign zooms out. Uh, the other commands like undo, copy, paste, these are the same from hopefully your word processing. So command Z un undoes something that you did that you don't want to do. Command C would copy it, command V would paste it. Um, these things all have key commands associated with it. So if you can see that grid line enabled option G, uh, snap enabled option S, it's telling you what the key commands are. Lock tracks is L down here on the record thing. Uh, for mine, it's number pad three. because that's the same as Pro Tools. But anyway, um, so if you forget your key commands, you can always be reminded of them over here. Um, let me quickly go over how you can customize things. So for example, if a good friend of mine changed his record thing to just R because, you know, you're a busy guy. So you go to your actions list, show action list. You say record, just type it in there. And it's giving you all of the commands that, uh, or possible actions that use record. And there, if they have any uh, key commands associated with them, they're on the left. So mine is number pad three. If I wanted to change that, I could say add, I'd say, okay, well, how about I just want it to be R? I could say, okay. Now it says, warning, this key is already mapped to the action transport toggle repeat. Do I want to override that? If I do, Yes, and R is now going to be my record command. Um, so I'm not going to do that because I don't want to change my thing. But uh, if you did that, then this thing, which is toggle repeat, which is basically a looping function, you'd want to change that. So you would go up to here if your record option is just R, and you would put in toggle repeat. 
you see this R thing, and you would change that to something else, maybe L if you like that, although I'm sure L is mapped to something else anyway. Just that's how easy it is to uh, customize all of your commands. So um, that's custom commands. Okay, so now we're going to talk about tracks setting up, how the tracks work. So here is a track. To make a new track, this is the one I'm using for my voiceover here. To make a new track, you can go up to the track menu and say insert new track. You can do command T to insert it uh, as this is your key command. So if I just do command T, boom, there's a new track. Or I can just double click in this empty space, there's another new track. Um, so once I've got a new track, this is the name of the track. And please always name your tracks, otherwise you're just going to get numbers and be unhappy. So we'll call this vocal one, just for fun. This is your record enable button. So if you're ready to record on that track, you would click that. This is your input. So if you're recording a mono source, like your voice, here's your inputs. I have 16 to choose from. You may have more or less. So you choose your input, what's going on. And if you want to hear it, you have to click this recording monitor thing in. Like if you want to hear it like now, I'm not recording myself, but you're hearing my voice because I have this in. If I click it out, you will. Now you hear my voice. Okay. Um, this is panning uh, right, left, or in the middle. Just leave it in the middle. Um, and this is muting the track. This is soloing the track. So you'd only hear that. So those are the basic uh, functions. This is effects. If you wanted to put reverb or something on your voice, you click that and it would open up a dialog box and you could throw something on there, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So that's uh, all of the command uh, commands, all of the controls on this thing. Um, getting slightly fancy, let's do the color option. So if you right click, um, I guess on a on a laptop, you maybe would do control and click. I don't know, but for me, it's a right click. And you see down here, it says track color. Otherwise you can just select it here, go to track. I think you get the same thing, yeah, track color. So you can select tracks to random color, custom color, whatever you wanna do. So I like my vocals to be um, yellow. So I'm gonna do select custom color. You have these different color options. You can be as nuts as you want to be. Let's just, do I want banana or lemon? Let's say lemon. So now my vocal track is lemon. Okay. I'm going to uh, show you how to set up a template now so that you don't have to do this but one time. So here's my vocal track. Let's, uh, can I duplicate that? How about duplicate track? So duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Now they all have the same name. That's not gonna work for me. That's gonna be a pain later on. So let's just call them vocal track two, vocal track three, and vocal four. So I've got four vocal tracks. Uh, I also want a reverb track. So here's another track. I'm going to call this reverb. I'd like this to be orange. Track color set to custom color. Give me something orange. Cantaloupe? No, I think tangerine would be nice. Okay, so now oh, that's pretty close to the orange. Let me change that. Custom color. Maraschino, am I? This is just getting too complicated. Let's go to strawberry instead and hope that it's there, just so that it's contrasting. So this reverb, I am going to click FX. I'm going to write reverb. Uh, you probably won't have these options. There should be one. Uh, let's take away the re, let's put just verb. Let's see. Um, uh, verb. So where is 
Oh, I'm in AU. So VST, let's see, do we have any? So these are the ones that come with um, Reaper. Re reverb and Reverbate. I think I like Reverbate. So here's Reverbate. You can change the room size, all sorts of fanciness. Um, low pass, high pass. I like a high pass. Let's put a high pass and get rid of the dry signal because we're going to be sending everything this. So here's my reverb. In order to send to my reverb, I would click here and drag, click the IO. It's very cool actually. Click the IO and drag. You see it's got this little plug symbol. I plug it in here and it pops up. This is how much I'm sending. I would generally back it off to about here. Now, instead of doing this for every track, which would take a minute, I mean, you're only doing four, it doesn't really matter, but let's not do that. So let's uh, click up here, let's delete that. So undo what we just did. Let's create another track and call this vocal bus. I'm gonna move it up top of these. I'm gonna move the reverb up top of this. Now, this little uh, plus sign when I roll over it, where it says, uh, decides whether this is a track or a folder. If I click this, it becomes a folder and anything underneath it goes up there. So now I can just click here, attach to the reverb, set my send level, and I'm done. And I don't have to do that. That's good for all of these tracks. So all four of these tracks are gonna be coming out of this one. I can turn them all down from here. I can turn them all up. I can mute them all from here. I can so I can also control the them individually still. I can mute just one or solo just one. Making and using templates. Reaper is super easy to make templates and uh, I think it'll really make your workflow very smooth because you don't have to set up any of this stuff that I just did. You just follow up a template and it'll be right there. So let me show you how to do that. Go to File, uh, Project Templates, Save Project as Template. So let's make sure we have what we want here. So let's add another track. Click here, do Command-T. There's another track, we'll call this guide track. So this would be the track that say, I would send to you that we're going to uh, collaborate on. Um, I guess we can leave that white, we got pink and yellow, that's fine. So there's our guide track. So when you import it, that'll be your guide track. So um, this track won't be there for you, but the rest. So we've got four vocal tracks ready to record, all routed to the same input got a vocal bus and we've got reverb and then you'll be ready to go. So here's your template. So we'll go to uh, project templates, save project as a template. We'll call this vocal recording save. Now, next time you make a project, all you have to do is project templates vocal recording, and boom, all this stuff is going to be here for you. Then you'll save that. You'll, you'll say save project, and it'll prompt you to give it a name, but all that stuff will be set up for you. So I highly recommend using templates. It uh, will save so much time.